What have you done to me, Choraku? I see weird racing games and I'm just drawn to them like a moth to a flame. Not today, get out of my sight. Groove Rider. Somebody asked for this one, didn't they? Hmm. Groove Rider. Hang on, actually. I can't just say the name. With a name like this, you need to give it some extra oomph. <clears throat> Groove Rider! Yeah, it's better. So, to start, did you guys know I'm a 90s kid? Yeah, as of right now, I'm 25 years old. I know, I'm practically dead. But growing up in the early days, I had an N64, and I didn't get that until I was six years old. But before that, I got a lot of enjoyment out of toys, which were called Skelextric. Now, Skelextric, as a brand name, is a largely British one, and as I'm from Scotland, I don't know how far-reaching the brand was outside of the UK. But a more generic term for the toy would be slot car racing. As a child, these toys were fascinating. You had a car of some variety that came in all shapes and sizes, rally cars, Formula One racers, and tons more, and they all came with tracks, which you could stitch together, and depending on how many track pieces you had, you could build huge winding courses for your vehicles to run. The cars would have a little metal brush looking thing on the bottom and that would serve as an electrical contact. You had the simple controller which had one button which powered the track and when you pulled it the cars would zoom along the track and you'd try and race without launching your car off the edge while also enjoying the slightly burned metal smell that the toy would give off. Ah, good times. And I suppose I guess the reason I'm talking about this is due to my most recent weird obscure racing game that happened to catch my eye and before we get into it I just want to give a quick shout out to the YouTube user Stephen Morris who commented on my Road to Adventure video suggesting this game. So, yeah, I took a while to get around to it, but I literally found this game for 50p in a second-hand shop, so let's check it out, I guess. So, what the hell is Groove Rider? It's the aforementioned toy slot car racers, but in video game form, to put it simply. And before we get really knee-deep into things, I thought I'd point out something kind of interesting. Here in the UK, Groove Rider is published by a company called Play It. A company, by the way, which is a total mystery to me, especially online. I couldn't find any information regarding this company. As far as I can tell, all they do is distribute and publish certain games within the PAL region. That's all I could find. The reason I'm bringing this up is because Playit have a very distinctive calling card for their games, and that is the disc art. They all have the same design with a sort of stripy circular pattern, and you'll never guess what games share this pattern. First and foremost, Road Trip Adventure. Ah, uh, everyone's favourite. The game which started all this weird racing business. And I'm totally not getting fed up of saying the name Road Trip Adventure. It would seem the company Play is responsible for a lot of very odd and obscure vehicle based games, not the least of which happens to be part of the cult fandom CarPG series, Choraku. So, how do we sum up Groove Rider's gameplay? Think Skelextric, but you're able to move between the grooves in the track freely. Hey, I just got the name. So just like that, you're restricted to the four grooves in the track, and you can pick up item boxes along the way to use Mario Kart style items to boost you, attack other racers, and lay traps. They're your standard kart racer style weapons. Along the track, there are also colored parts of the grooves which affect your racer. Green speeds you up, red slows you down, and orange locks you in place so you can't switch lanes. There's also a blue track, but... I don't know what the hell that one does. There also seems to be weird green O's and red X signs, things you can hit, but again, I have no idea what they do. You may be detecting a slight issue with this game. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of information about what everything is. Honestly, the game just kind of throws you into the deep end and it's kind of overwhelming. I mean, look at the menus. When you start the game up, you have so many options and you're not really told exactly what they do or what kind of impact they have, but what it boils down to is pick a mode, pick a race, pick a car, pick a track, but it feels very confusing right out of the gate. Hell, when I first started the game up, I didn't even know how to move. I mean, look, here's footage of my very first race. Yeah, I had no clue what to do. I didn't know what buttons did what, or even how the game worked, and I'm still not 100% certain about what everything does, so it definitely could have done a better job with providing information as to what things did. There's a definite budget kind of feeling to Groove Rider, like it was made cheaply or quickly. 
For one, the game was actually kind of glitchy. I even had the game just totally crashing me at one point during my first playthrough, and I don't even know why. I am going to give it the benefit of the doubt, though, because you can never be too sure with second-hand discs, after all. Now then, how does the game look? Well, as far as I can tell, there is no real artistic vision for anything. Vehicles are just your standard cars, menus are a random splurge of colours and stock looking graphics. The visuals lack any kind of oomph or fun. It's like the team who made it weren't super passionate about what they were making, or as I said, they maybe just rushed the game. It's all kind of bleh. I will say though, I do like that they tried to make things feel small. If you look at the tracks, you can actually see that they are meant to take place in actual slot car racing tracks within a house. But I also see this as a missed opportunity because even with this, there isn't really any fun in the visuals or environment, but in saying that, I did have a good time playing it. It's unique and I appreciate the idea. It's another one of those games from the PS2 era that you could never really see these days outside of some kind of indie game. Groove Raider was interesting, yet another game brought to my attention by a common, and I'm always paying attention seeing what people are talking about in the videos, and if anything, I'll be looking even closer now, so thank you for that. In the meantime, I think I'm gonna go get some Mikado.